Color Purple by Alice Walker, winner of Pulitzer Prize in the year 1983, published in 1982. An epistolary novel which is a feminist work particularly focuses on black feminism. From this particular sentence, we got two terms. One is epistolary and another one is black feminism. Let's first understand what is an epistolary work. The work which is written in letter format, like you can see in this picture how it was written. Next is black feminism, which centers on the experience of American African women. Being black and being a woman, because of which they are doubly colonized by the men of their culture or community as well as by the European men. The color purple centers around Sally, an African-American teenager raised in rural isolation in Georgia. Sally confesses her feelings through letters to God in her diary. All of this started because her father, Alfonso, warns her not to tell anybody but God after he rapes her and her pregnancy for the second time at the age of 14. Alfonso's cruelty does not stop here. He takes the child away as he did with her first baby, leaving Sally to believe that both have been killed. When the widowed, Mr. also called as Albert, proposes marriage to Sally's younger sister, Nettie, Alfonso pushes him to take Sally instead, forcing her into an abusive marriage. However, Albert's interest continued in Nettie, which resulted in her leaving. Sally, who always used to get oppressed by the patriarchy, learned that women should only be dominated by men. Thereafter, when Harpo, Albert's son, marries Sophia after she gets pregnant, sought Sally's advice. Sally, who advises him to beat his wife, Sophia. Unlike Sally, Sophia is defiant. She fights back. Upon learning that Sally encouraged Harpo's abuse, she confronts a guilty Sally, who admits to being jealous of Sophia's refusal to back down, and the two women become friends. Moreover, in the novel, we see Sally's encounter with Shug. Shug Avery, a glamorous and independent singer who is also Albert's occasional concubine. When Sally starts spending time with Shug, we can see an inclination of her towards Shug which develops into a romantic relationship. While Sally talks to Shug, Shug comes to know about Sally's disparity to find her children. During this time, Sally discovers that Albert has been hiding letters that Nettie has sent her. Sally begins reading them and learns that Nettie has befriended a minister, Samuel, and his wife, Corinne, and that the couple adopted children, Adam and Olivia, are actually Sally's. Nettie joins the family on a mission in Liberia, where Corinne later dies. Later, Nettie married Samuel and adopted her sister's children. In the letter, it was also discovered that Alfonso is actually Sally's stepfather and that her biological father was killed. Sally now writes letters addressing Nettie, questioning her fate towards God. Impudent Sally moves with Shug, leaving Albert behind in Memphis Inn. Once there, Sally comes into her own and creates a successful business selling tailored pants. She changes her passion of tailoring into a full-fledged business. Her happiness, however, is tempered somewhat by Shuck's affairs, though Sally continues to love her. Sally comes back once after she gets the news of Alfonso's death. Now she has inherited his house and adjusts herself to settle there. During this time, she develops, she befriends Albert, who is apologetic about his earlier treatment of her. After some 30 years apart, Sally is then reunited with Nettie, her husband Samuel, and also meets her long-lost children who once were declared killed by Alfonso.